Welcome to On the Couch with NMC. I'm your host, Anthea Niambo. Today we're going to dive into a topic that hasn't got enough attention, prostate cancer. And to do that, I have Dr. Asade. Welcome, doctor. Thank you very much, Anthea. It's a pleasure to be here. Doctor, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, my name is Dr. Ahmed Azadeh, and I'm a general practitioner, a GP here in Vintuk, and I've been here most of my life. Um, happy to be on the couch here with you today. Doctor, can you explain what prostate cancer is and how does it affect an individual? Prostate is uh, an organ and it's an organ that is exclusive to males, to men. So it's a cancer mm -hmm. which affects just men. Uh, maybe we can talk about what a cancer is really just to go back to the, the bare bones. So all of our cells in our body are continually having to replace themselves when they get old. Mm. Uh, but every now and then, the ability f of a cell to replicate itself at a normal rate goes a little, something goes wrong, and it starts to just replicate itself and grow and grow and grow uncontrollably. And that becomes a cancer, essentially, because it's just growing. So, Doctor, how do we test for prostate cancer? So, there's no easy way to test for any cancer. Often, yes. patients will come and say, Doctor, can you just do a cancer test for me? Mm -hmm. You know, if it was that easy, cancer wouldn't be such a problem in the yes. world. Mm -hmm. Often, a cancer will give you symptoms based on where it is in the body. So, if we know where the prostate is, so the prostate is about, you know, it's a small, um, they call it sort of like a walnut sized organ. I mean, a lot of people don't know what a walnut is, but it's about, four centimeters by three centimeters, let's say, and it's round. It's at the base of your bladder, right underneath the bladder. And the pipe that connects the bladder to pee out, you know, your urethra, travels right through this prostate gland. Mm -hmm. Now the function of the prostate gland is to actually help with uh, seminal fluid and prostatic fluid that actually, you know, protects the, the semen and the sperm cells when they're passing through as part of the reproductive system of males. So because this gland is right there, if it starts to grow because of a cancer, yes. then depending on where it grows, it may give you different symptoms. So the most common symptom is a bit of blockage, let's say, or blood in the urine that one may notice. Um, so that's kind of the symptoms that one would get. Mm. The trick with prostate cancer, or the unfortunate thing is that because the pipe travels through the middle and the cancers typically start to form on the outside, by the time it squeezes the pipe, you know, it's a little bit late. It's already gone through the whole gland and it may have spread elsewhere. For example, to locally to the uh, bladder that it's right stuck against, but it can also have spread through the lymph nodes to the different glands and then further afield to bones, etc., to all over the body which is the worst case, you know, yes. if, a, if a cancer sort of spreads. So um, there is this rapid testing that goes on with prostate cancer. Would you advise men to do it or do they really just have to go into the doctor and really get an intrusive test? This is one of the sort of the, the tricky things with, with most men is to tell them, look, it's time to test your prostate, right? Because I think the media has kind of always talked about it, like the one test that men need to do is test their prostate, yes. and it's the last thing they wanna do. They feel invaded. I mean, little do they know that women in general on an annual basis are getting you know, a lot more invasive sort of tests done. So it is something that I would advise men to do. But prostate cancer is very much a cancer that happens with age, right? Okay. So they say it's not a question of uh, if you'll get prostate cancer, but if you live long enough, you will get prostate cancer. So it's more like when you'll get it. So it really starts to pick up from the age of 40 upwards. Before the age of 40, there's not really a reason to be testing for it, because if anything, you'll just cause a lot more anxiety, a lot more costly testing, things like that. So really it's to help patients to understand that, are you at risk for prostate cancer? Yeah. A lot of guidelines around the world used to always say from 40, you start to test with this, what you uh, called the rapid test, which is just to test whether your prostate specific antigen, your PSA, which is a, a marker of the prostate, it's an enzyme that the prostate produces. And if it goes up 
it may be an indication for cancer, but it may also be an indication for an infection or just an enlargening of the prostate, which is a natural process that happens in elderly men. By testing for it, you may, you know, like scare people too soon and it may go down the route of testing and a lot of anxieties yeah. when it's not necessary. So it's really important to consult your healthcare practitioner to know when it is the right time. So I advise patients from the age of 40 to start thinking about doing just the blood tests at least. If you've had a first degree relative, so a brother or a father, yes who's had prostate cancer, you may want to definitely do it from the age of 40. If they had it earlier than 40, then you should also do it earlier than 40 because it may be a genetic component that we haven't quite yet figured out or we know it runs in, in some families. Uh, so from the age of 40. But for most people, 45 now they're starting to say, okay, definitely you have to start going and getting annual or every two years a PSA test. Mm -hmm. Now the one that men are always worried about is called the DRE, right? The yeah. Digital Rectal Examination, where the doctor actually has to feel the prostate. Mm -hmm. Now, if you remember where I said where the prostate is, it's at the base of the bladder, and that's very deep. So the only way you can actually get to that prostate is through the rectum. So it means you actually have to stick a finger, obviously mm -hmm. with a glove, and try to feel the prostate through the rectum. Now, if you also remember, I said that often cancer yes. starts from the outside of the prostate. And that's why have, feeling the prostate is actually quite a good way to start to pick up an early cancer. If you see a change in shape or a consistency of the prostate. And that is what most men are fearful of. Um, yeah. You know, in medical school, they say, if you don't put your finger in it, you've put your finger in it. <laughs> which means you've made a mess, you've missed yeah, something. Yes. So it's just to really encourage men to actually just, you know, may not need the DRE, that rectal examination, but at least to go the and PSE. do the t blood test. Yes. Uh, from the age of 40 or 45, if there's hardly any risk in your family. So um, are these testing stations or institutions really available for men? Where can they go? who can they see is it just at the doctor or do we have got different centers like the cancer association when they usually do um, screening for the ladies is it also something similar like that for men or do we just specifically have to go to the doctor there are other avenues um, this is sort of a, a sponsored by nmc so in private healthcare, it's always supported by by the medical aids yeah. um, to go and see your private doctor, to pay for the lab tests, etc. So that is all covered and that would be a good avenue and an easy avenue to have with your GP or your primary care doctor. One doesn't need to go and see a urologist, a specialist. You yeah. can just use your normal primary care family medicine doctor. Beyond that, in the peripheries of the country, I do see a lot of our patients do get some PSA testing when they have some sort of complaints mm -hmm. within the state sector. So that okay. is possible. It's probably not widely enough done, uh, but at the state, for example, there is a, a strong urology department uh, where they do, you know, all the degrees of testing and treatment for prostate problems. Mm -hmm. um, the Cancer Association also does do a lot of uh, um, when they go out and do pap smears or they also will can do prostate checks or at least a lot of patient education. Because mm -hmm. if you remember, I said, you know, 40 to 45 is really when you need to start testing for it. So in the earlier years, and we know we've got our census, we know we're a very young population in the country, yes. 3 million plus people, but you know, over half of us are, are less than 35 years of age. Mm. So over half the population doesn't really need this right now, but education at the early stages is already important. So that's why it's an important topic because in general, I think you would say men neglect their health mm. um, and that is something we've, we've seen across the board. So are there any preventative measures? The preventative measures are probably the same as with all cancers. Okay. So anytime you stress the body, you know, the chances that something in the, rep, rep, the cells as they reproduce themselves, yes. something goes wrong. The more you stress the body, the more the chances are that something will go wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so I think general stress, right? So that could be from a mental health point of view, psychological, spiritual stresses, often can increase your likelihood that your body's ability to no pick up 
abnormal replication of cells and stop that. And then it goes, becomes a cancer essentially. So that's definitely one aspect of it, but that's with all cancers. Um, the same with, for example, decreasing smoking, uh, exposure to other sort of carcinogens, like alcohol, for example. Alcohol consumption has also been uh, implicated with, with an increased risk of cancers across the body. Then from a dietary point of view, there is some sort of research going more, uh, or evidence, I should say, that a lot of red meats, a lot of grilled foods, for example, can start to increase your risk specifically of colon cancer, digestive cancers, but also now in, in uh, prostate cancers. So from a preventative point of view, it's making sure you have a relatively well-balanced and healthy diet. Mm -hmm. The type of things that can prevent it typically are um, you know, antioxidants. Mm -hmm. So the nice colorful vegetables are always uh, have a lot of antioxidants in like them. Beetroot and all beetroot, the spinach and all spinach, that. Spinach, okay. uh, cauliflower, okay. broccoli, the tomatoes. So now tomatoes specifically have actually lysine in them. And they've always said, it probably needs more research, but it's one of those things that they say tomatoes are good for your prostate. Uh -huh. So tell your boys to always get used <laughs> to eating uh, yeah. tomatoes, which okay. is a good challenge. But anyway, so tomatoes are are good. Selenium as a mineral has also been shown to be uh, useful or healthy for the prostate. So it's more just like having a good, healthy, fresh diet. Exercise? Exercise can only be beneficial. Okay. Um, so it just adds on to preventative measures. Exactly. But that's for all health, yes, health okay. reasons. So I would just say it's good to have these things, not just to prevent yes. prostate cancer, but in health in, in general. In general, okay. your heart health lungs and then other cancers as well so from your point of view what is the prostate cancer situation in namibia so i tried to look up our latest stats and maybe i need to speak to our cancer association to to get see if they've actually captured um, some real namibian data on that but uh, i wasn't able to get some it hasn't been published from what i could find mm -hmm. but in general prostate cancer is the second most common cancer amongst men around the world, okay. second to lung cancer. And I think this has a lot to do with, you know, we're having aging populations. So the longer you live, it's the longer you're exposed to a lot of the, the cancer pr promoting exposure, so pollution. But smoking specifically is, has, is probably the biggest thing with, with uh, lung cancer. Now, similarly, as we age, we also know that we have a higher risk of developing prostate, prostate cancer. cancer. Yeah. And the triggers may be similar to, to lung cancer. I do believe that probably prostate cancer is maybe close, if not overtaking uh, lung cancer, because as globally, we're generally smoking less and less. Uh, we're more conscious about that, and we can mm -hmm. pick up things in the lungs much easier but we're also living much longer. And so the chances of picking up prostate cancer are increasing as we get older and older as a population. Uh, and so we will develop more prostate cancer, but it's important to know that a lot of people will die with prostate cancer, but not from prostate cancer. So it tends to be a very slow growing cancer and okay. it doesn't tend to be very aggressive, right? So it's not like a lung cancer, which is gonna cut your oxygen levels, it's going to cause chronic coughs, bleeding, you know, it's going to cause major yeah. illness. But prostate cancer, for the most part, is a very slow growing cancer, so it can be treated. And, you know, I was reading the, the sort of the, if you've been diagnosed with prostate cancer, the five year survival rate is 98%. So, you know, the majority of people will, and that first five years is always important, yeah. you know, from a, from a diagnosis of cancer. Explain. So essentially, if they've picked up a cancer, it's because it's often become symptomatic, okay. which means it's pushing on something or it's spread somewhere. And that's usually a bad sign if it's spread mm -hmm. because it's very hard to control. Now, the good thing about prostate cancer is most of the time it's slow growing, so it only will spread quite late. And if it spreads, it's often quite uh, sensitive to hormonal and chemotherapies and other sort of therapy so it can be sort of subdued and kept quiet mm -hmm. and it already happens when you're quite older in life so if you have less than 10 years expectancy let's say you're 80 years old 90 years old 
they may not even treat it. They may say, it's not going to do much to you. Oh, um, interesting. Whereas if you're younger, 50 years old, they will be more aggressive and say, let's treat it. Let's make sure it doesn't impact your life, you know, for the next 30, 40 years that you are expected to live. Okay. Well, thank you, doctor, for that insight. I must say it has oh, broadened up my mind set about prostate cancer. But any last words before we say goodbye? Maybe I can just re-encourage the men to, to take care of your health. Uh, men do have more, obviously, the only ones to get prostate cancer, but we have other sort of health issues, hearts, mm -hmm. cholesterols, diabetes, high blood pressure is all over Namibia. So just get that relationship with your, your doctor and have, have that conversation. It's not as scary as you think, and uh, it will definitely you know, add to your life. Thank you so much for the insightful topic that we had. I have got more understanding on what prostate cancer is, what to do, and where we actually stand in Namibia with it. My absolute pleasure. These are important conversations we need to have. Being diagnosed with prostate cancer is not the end of the world. Have a chat with your doctor and be your own superhero. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our social media platform. And don't forget to comment, like, or share with your family and friends. Until next time, it's bye for now.